Hi guys, my name's Bill. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a digital multimeter. So the meter I'll be using in this tutorial is my Milwaukee clamp meter. Now this is gonna be just a basic tutorial and I'm gonna cover the functions on this dial. Most every multimeter that you pick up will have most of these functions aside from maybe the capacitance and the DC and the DC amp for the clamp function here. So I'll put a link in the description to this meter. So if you want more information on it or if you want to buy one, you can do that. So let's go over the functions on the dial. The first setting is the AC amp setting. So for the first demonstration, I'm going to hook this burner up to 120 volts AC and see how much amps it's drawing with the, with the amp setting on the clamp meter. All right, so I got the two wires connected to the burner element. My meter set on amps, AC. The clamp is around one of the leads, doesn't matter which one. And I'm gonna plug this into an outlet. And this is telling us how much current that this burner is drawing right now. It's drawing 2.4 amps from the wall. This is the DC amp setting. Okay, so for the DC amp setting, that's the second position on the dial here, I'm connected to the positive battery terminal that goes to the main, main fuse panel on, on my son's car here. And right now, the car is off. We're not drawing any kind of power. I'm gonna turn the headlights on so we can see how much current they draw. Okay, so now the headlights are on and it looks like they're drawing almost 15 amps of current. And that's how the DC clamp function works. This is the volts AC setting. Now for the volts AC, we're, we've got our leads connected to the bottom here. And these two wires are of course plugged into an outlet. Given this power, we've already tested the amperage. Now we're just gonna test the voltage. And we can see we're getting 120 volts. You can also use this to test the outlet. Here's the outlet that our burner's plugged into. And if we just stick our leads in the two slots, we can see that we're getting 120 volts here. This is the volts DC setting. Now for DC voltage, we're on the DC function. I'm testing the two positive and the negative terminals here on this battery. And it's a 19.2 volt battery, but it's only showing 15.4 volts and this battery is completely dead. Now for this test, I have an 18 volt Milwaukee battery that's fully charged. I'm into the positive and negative terminals on the battery slots here. And you can see we get, we're getting 20.6 volts DC and this battery is completely charged. And here's a big old car battery. Should be around 12 volts. And we're only at 10.4 and this battery is dead. This is the ohms setting for measuring resistance. So for this test, I'm connected to the two terminals on the fan motor and we're getting about 47.6 or 47.7 ohms. That means the windings on this motor are good. So if voltage was applied, the motor should spin. If you had a reading that looked like this, then the windings would have been open and no current could pass through and the fan wouldn't work. And here's another example of resistance reading. This is a temperature probe for a stove and we're getting 1.052 kilo ohms or 1052 ohms and that means it's good. And if you had a reading that looked like this that means the circuit's broken somewhere inside here and this wouldn't work correctly. And here's one more example of resistance reading. We're reading, we're reading the resistance through all the coils on this burner and we're getting about 47 or 46.9 ohms of resistance. And that means the coils in here are not broken anywhere. And if voltage was applied, the, the burner would of course get hot. This is the continuity setting. This is used for measuring switches. Now for the continuity test, this little sound symbol when the leads are touched together you get a you get a beep 
So this is good for testing switches, and this is an example of a switch. It's either open or closed. And we can tell that that one's good, but the circuit's closed inside. But this one here, we touch across the two terminals, we don't get a beep. Now the difference between the resistance and the audible beep, if this detects a closed circuit with no resistance, it will beep. But if there is a certain amount of resistance, it won't beep, but it'll still give you a resistance reading because it's still, it's still an ohm setting. It still has the little symbol. But you're not going to get a beep if there's a resistance reading. So just because it doesn't beep when you have it on that setting doesn't mean that whatever you're testing is bad if it's a motor. You don't want to use it to test motors, just open and closed circuits like a light switch or thermal cutoffs like this on a dryer. And that's how that works. And this is the capacitance setting. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna test is a capacitor and real quick safety on capacitors. Most of them have a built-in resistor that they will automatically discharge, but you still don't wanna trust that. The, the resistor could have failed and this could still hold a charge and it's deadly. So anytime you work with a capacitor, you want to make sure it's discharged before you test it and you take something maybe a piece of wire or a screwdriver and you touch across the two terminals on the capacitor just to ensure that it's discharged and once you're sure that it's discharged then you can test it so make sure you do that first before you touch any of these because you could potentially get seriously injured okay so now that we can move on to testing the capacitor you want to look for its rating which this one says 0.91 microfarads at plus or minus 3%. So whenever we connect our leads, we want to get a reading that's pretty close to that. So let's do it. Okay, so our meter's set on our capacitance testing. And we're just going to connect these to the two terminals on the end. And we're getting point 0.93, which is close enough to our 0.91, so this capacitor is good. Okay guys, so there's some basic information on how to use a multimeter. Now this was intended for people who have no or very little experience in using them. So I hope this video helps you out. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and do that now. And thanks for watching.